Good morning, Journey family. We are glad you are here to um, join us today to worship with us. Um, Yolette sent me a text and she said, she usually says in her text, will you do the call to worship? And this morning, when she sent me a text, it said, will you invite people to worship? And we were, before we started this, when we were talking about that, we're like, call to worship. You know, people don't call people very often anymore, so maybe text people to worship. We're not sure what, what the right mode is. But I would ask that you share the stream right now, that you hit that little share button, and that you invite your Facebook peeps or whoever to worship. Um, so invite people uh, to come alongside and worship with us this morning. Um, I was out walking this morning. It's a beautiful morning. And um, I was listening to the old, an old song. Um, and the song says, um, the words were, I will see this season through. I will fix my eyes on you. And um, I thought that's a good word for the time that we're living in right now um, and whatever it is that you're going through because, you know, there's a lot of people going through a lot of stuff right now. And um, so let's see this season through and we're going to fix our eyes on Jesus because that is where our hope is. Um, in, in the Psalms it says, not to us, O Lord, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. And because of God's love and faithfulness, we can see this season through. And this morning, um, my prayer for us is that we will fix our eyes on him um, because of his love and, and faithfulness. So let's get our eyes fixed. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your love and faithfulness. And this morning, we come before you um, with pretty humble hearts uh, with all the things that are the craziness that's going on in this world. And um, we just lift everything up to you. And we pray that this morning we will fix our eyes on you. We'll fix our eyes on the cross and the love and the faithfulness, um, the, those things that you've done for us. In your name we pray. Amen.
sweet did you gaze on my perilous heart to befriend me to my bitter end carry the burden for his grave and my failure you prevailed in pure to be found in the depths of your heart as good as forgiven oh how you graced that cross where jesus died and death took the loss wild as the flood gates of heaven flung wide open Stars, the mind is alive. You raise yours the glory that took down that grave, bright as the sun, almighty in love. God forever, your kingdom come. Oh, how sweet is the sound. Of a heart drenched in grace, rising up from the ashes in praise, alive to your greatness. Hope has praise and his mercy through the terrible night. How you blaze through the darkness, I find. Bright as the morning, oh, how you graced that cross. When Jesus died and death took the loss, wild as the flood, gates of heaven flung wide open within his scars. Now mine is alive. glory that took down that grave bright as the sun almighty in love God forever your kingdom come my heart burns wild in my chest in all of your heart in all that you are let your Wild of my breath, in all of your heart, I'll sing it again till my heart burns. Wild in my chest, in all of your heart, in all that you are, let your praise run. Wild of my chest, in all of your heart, I'll sing it again till my heart. Sing of your love 
I pray your kingdom come, your will be done in our worship, in my words, in the homes of all who are gathered this morning to watch and to worship. We um, consecrate this time and this space and this place uh, to you and pray have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Really glad to see you uh, this morning, glad to be worshiping together. I want to remind you that if you go to our website or to our Church Center app, that there are notes that go along with the message this morning that you can uh, download. And uh, again, just I think it's a useful tool to help you um, stay with the message uh, through, through the week. So I encourage you to use that. It'll be especially helpful this morning. You don't have to have it, but, but I'm going to start this morning with, with the dreaded pop quiz. That's right. We're going to do a pop quiz this morning. Um, it's going to uh, refer back to last week's message, so I hope you did your homework well this week and, and are prepared. And, and if you missed last Sunday, uh, that's all right. Uh, you can go ahead and take the quiz, and you just might have to do some makeup uh, afterwards, some, some review. But uh, I encourage you to do it anyway, okay? Pop quiz. Um, here's a, I'm going to start with, I'm going to give you a passage give you a point of reference for our quiz this morning. The passage comes from Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. And it says this, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Right? So I'm going to get asked three questions, and the three questions are really just the, the lead up to the, to the real question, but the three questions are this. First of all, first question, this morning, is your soul at rest? Is your soul at rest? Second question, are the responsibilities that you're carrying today are the responsibilities that you carried last week and the responsibilities that you carry into the coming week, are they easy? Is the, the, the burden that you're carrying, is it easy? And the third question is this. Is the weight of life leaving you with a bounce in your step? Are you, are you skipping through life or are you... Uh, Light, uh, light on your feet and, and dancing and moving freely through life? Are you at rest? Are you at ease? Is your load light? Because last week the message was this. Right? Jesus speaks to us and, and, and offers comfort and rest and peace. And the challenge was, believe me. Believe me. And my question this morning is, by this standard of Matthew chapter 11 and Jesus' invitation here, are you? Are you believing Jesus? Now, it's, it's really almost, it's almost not a fair question, right? I mean, we're 11 months into this pandemic. Actually, I mean, we're a full year into it, uh, just a, a month away from, from the lockdowns and, and our first real experience of it uh, in, the United, in the United States. But, but the last 11 months, and, and increasingly so over time, has just been filled with um, grieving um, for many of us for the loss of, of loved ones and um, the, the, the sorrow that comes with that. And, and um, we see around us um, 
kids are, are struggling, and there's been this massive movement in the last few weeks to get kids back to school because it, as it turns out it's not just that they're missing out on educational opportunities, but kids are struggling with, with mental health and, and, and um, relationships and connections, and, and it's just, it's been really hard. Our, our healthcare workers are, are exhausted, they're, they're wiped out. Um, we're f continuing to deal with economic uncertainties and, and political turmoil, and, and, and so to, to throw all of that into, the common, into this context, and, and, and then to add salt to the wound, I mean, Tom Shady has to win another Super Bowl. It's almost not even fair to ask such a question, and especially in the form of a pop quiz, right? I mean, if anything, this would be like a master's level um, final exam or a petition for sainthood. And I ain't no saint. And I think many of you feel the same way, right? Really? This is what it means to believe Jesus? And, and how's that going for us? And the, and the thing is that, that if you look at what Jesus is saying here, he's, he's actually not asking a super saint. It, it's really an entry-level program that he's inviting us into. All of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens weary and burdened describes a whole lot of folks. And the past year has compounded those things to be sure. But things actually, I mean, if we think back, weren't going swimmingly well before all of this started. I saw um, this a national survey, came across it again, and the survey was about um, Incivility and, and so much of that that we've experienced in the past year with, with all the political turmoil and, and all the stress and the anxiety. And, and the survey produced these results. It says that the average American encounters 17 acts of incivility each week. That, that 50% of Americans have ended a relationship because of the person who they're in that relationship with was mean. That they just behaved uncivilly. That the 26 percent of people have quit a job because of a hostile work environment. That 95 percent of Americans believe that we have a civility problem, and 70 percent identify, identify it as a crisis. And 80 percent of those believe, people believe that it's not going to get any better until our government officials start behaving more civilly. And here's the most alarming point of this survey. It was released on July 30th, 2013. This is what we were saying about ourselves and about our country and about our situation in July of 2013. And man, we have moved eons beyond that now. I mean, this is before the Donald Trump presidency and all the, the chaos and turmoil that came out of both the resistance and the movement and, and all. Of this precedes all of that by, by years. And the problem doesn't originate with technology but it's undeniably been facilitated and exacerbated by it. The deluge of the 24-7 news cycle dumping on us the weight of the world, the, the world that we actually really live in or, or the world that the commentator of the day is telling us is imagining will happen if we don't do this or if that country doesn't do that or if this doesn't happen, then these things are going to become the reality and it's all sides of the equation. And not just the weight of the world, but the breadth of the world, right? That we have access to what's going on all over the globe in ways that were unconceivable 100 years ago. unspoken 
but thoroughly agreed upon social contract that comes with our electronic leashes, I mean our, our smartphones. Right? That if you have one of these, when you get one of these, that you are available 24 hours a day. And if someone texts you, you need to text them back because if you don't text them back, they're going to say, are you upset with me? Are you mad at me? Why didn't you text me back? Are you ignoring me? And vice versa. And our phones relentlessly beckon us with alerts and notifications that say, come to me. Come back to me again and again and again. And I will give you what? What's the offer? Okay. What's the offer? I will give you a window into the best of lives that you are not living. I'll give you an unending stream of content and advertisements that have taken all of the information from every click and like and search that you've done, creating thousands of data points and using that information to continually feed you content that will keep your attention with an endless array of ads trying to sell you something. And the fruit of it, what does it give us? Well, if you read the research that's being done, it gives us distraction, discontent, division, loneliness, isolation, depression. Are you exhausted yet? 2013, Disney came out with a um, popular movie, Frozen, and uh, the, the hit song from the, from the movie was Let It Go. And if you remember back to that time, and there were like two, two and a half, three-year-old kids just walking along, belting out this song, Let It Go, and, and all through childhood, you know, these kids, they, they, they learned the song word for word from beginning to end and just were singing it everywhere, and every parent was taking videos and putting it on YouTube. You can go back and you can see hundreds of them. And it's not really surprising, is it? Because, I mean, Disney's a great storyteller and they've learned how to capture the attention and the imaginations of our kids and get them to go along and then sell them their products. But it wasn't just kids. I mean, you could hear that song being sung on um, bases in Iraq and in hospitals, and in schools, and everywhere you went, people were singing this song, and, and across countries and languages, and it was, it was as, if the, as if the whole world had this burden that they were trying to get off of their back, let it go, and the song captured that desire. And, and ironically, at the end of the song, Elsa, the singer, has created a magnificent ice castle which becomes a prison of her own making. And into this world, into this chaos, into this madness, Jesus speaks. And he says, come to me. Come to me. Peter captures the invitation when he says, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Come to me. St. Augustine wrote that we must empty ourselves of all that fills us so that we may be filled with what we are empty of. To make room for God to fill our soul, we need to let go of other things to create space. And man, we have a lot of stuff, don't we? Yesterday, um, the Mayfair band was doing a, a clothing drive, and, and we took out 20 bags of clothes and knickknacks and stuff out of our house that was just taking up space. And, and honestly, it didn't even make a dent. There's still stuff everywhere. And how many of our souls are cluttered like that? And what's the offer? 
Jesus says, come to me, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Um, I've had bouts of long-term low-grade depression uh, on and off at different points in my life. And and one of the the, the kind of first indicators that that things aren't going well is is I start not sleeping well. And it's not always because of that. Sometimes I'm just have, there are other things going on that keep me from. But usually, I mean, if it's if I start not sleeping well, that's kind of a place that is moving. And, and I don't like. I you find if you if you read the Psalms that like mental health was not something that was generated in, in our day. And I don't own the the corner on it. That I, I think it's. Um, legitimized, authenticated, invites us into the story in Psalms like 40, Psalm 42. It says, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Why this restlessness? And it strikes me, and it's my go-to psalm when it happens, that the, the, the very f- first offer in Psalm 23, the, the famous beloved psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want Why? Because he makes me lie down. The first offer of this beautiful psalm is God wants to give you and me rest. You can actually produce a theology of rest. You, you come to it over and over and over again. Psalm 127 says, Useless for you to work so hard from early morning to late at night, anxiously working for food to eat. For God gives rest to his loved ones. Now, if you're not sleeping well, that doesn't mean that God doesn't love you, but it might mean that you're not believing him, that I'm not believing him in his love for me. I, and so many people tell me, he says, every time I try and pray, I fall asleep. You know what? That just may be the answer to your prayer. <laughs> that when you start to pray that God is giving you the rest that you so desperately need before anything else. Your, your smartphone can actually become your ally with a different set of settings and alerts and notifications. How about instead of alerts that tell you you have a message, an alert that tells you, hey, you've been on this app for this amount of time. Maybe you want to check out, just a reminder. Or maybe instead of, well, not instead of, but right, you have many of us set alarms to wake us up in the morning. What if we set alarms to tell us to go to bed at night? to shut it off. I introduced um, yesterday if, on our Facebook feed um, the Pause app. I've talked about it before. But uh, I get two notifications every day from the Pause app that reminds me to stop. Just in the middle of the day, to stop and take a deep breath and remind myself of a few really important things. I'll talk about that again later. But, but what if we used those alerts and notifications to actually become a friend instead of a temptation, a lure into an endless cycle? He says, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Now, if you're wearing a yoke right now, it's probably because um, somebody cracked an egg and the yolk's on you. Yolks are, are um, not commonly seen anymore because we have tractors now, but, it, but a yolk was, I've actually, do you get the picture of it, Ron? There we go. It's put around a cattle's neck and teams them together to allow them to, to do the heavy lifting for you. If you look at that picture, it's not hard to imagine what an ill-fitting, ill-fitting yoke, a yoke that doesn't fit, would have on an animal, right? If it doesn't fit right, it would start to wear, 
and rub in and, and the wrong places, be uncomfortable. That discomfort would probably lead to um, physical ailments, maybe even affliction diseases that would make that animal less productive, less fruitful in its work. Jesus says, if you're weary, if you're burdened, you have an ill-fitting yoke. It doesn't fit. You've hitched yourself up to things that you just weren't meant to carry. Or maybe it's not that you weren't meant to carry it, but that you've attached meaning to it or responsibility for it that goes beyond what you are capable of. There's a, a famous book came out many years ago, but still very popular, a book called Boundaries. And Boundaries is about how we take on things that aren't ours to take on. And how we try and dump things onto other people that are ours to take on. I'm reading a book right now by Jordan B. Peterson called 12 Rules of Life. And he has a whole section on all the reasons that you or I might be helping someone that really aren't about helping them, but about our own vanity or narcissism. He actually has a, a diagnosis. If you are helping someone and they continue to spin, to, to spin and spiral downward and you're going with them, it's probably not about them as much as what you're doing is about you, about me. That when we carry things that aren't ours, they take us down the drain. And Jesus has a prescription. He says, trade in the yoke that doesn't fit for the yoke that I will give you. Trade it in. Let me teach you. Why? He says, because unlike all of your other appealers, he says, I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. And why is it that this yoke provides desperately needed rest? Jesus says, because my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And I have to pause here for a second and just say, for myself and for a lot of other people, following Jesus feels like it's anything but easy. Think about it. Think about the things that Jesus teaches and your life. Is it love and forgiveness that has you all tied up in knots? Or is it bitterness or resentment? Is it contentment or desire? Gratitude or greed? Generosity or envy that's pushing you for more and more and more? Is it trusting God or worry that's keeping you up at night? Is it humility or pride that has you buried under mounds of shame? Is it your quest for a happy little life and for comfort? Or is it denying self that is overwhelming you? Is it your pursuit of God's kingdom or your pursuit of American politics that's creating anxiety in your life? Is it worshiping God or is it worshiping your kids or your career 
or your 401k that's creating anxiety. It's hard because despite the fact that it's running us into the ground, I don't want to give up the old yoke. Jesus' yoke is easy. Jesus' burden is light. It's the coming. It's the, it's the accepting the invitation that's hard. Right? When we come, we experience what Jesus offers. We just have a really, really hard time letting go of all those other things and actually coming. Imagine. Imagine a union with God that produces less worry, less anxiety, less fear, more freedom, better fruit. Let it go. Let it go is the invitation that Jesus gives to us. Let it go. Come to me. I uh, mentioned earlier the, the, um, the Pause app. It was uh, created by Wild at Heart Ministries. Uh, it's a tool that I've been using for, um, for over a year now. And um, it's just, it's beautiful in its simplicity. And I want to challenge you um, to, to download it this week. And if you don't do the computer thing, it's okay. Uh, I'll make it easy for you. Right? If you yeah, it's, there's some resources that go beyond that that I'm going to direct you to in, in the coming weeks. But just for now, right? The, the pause app begins with a one-minute pause that alerts me twice a day. And it begins this, this, with these words. Lord, I give everyone and everything to you. Lord, I give everyone and everything to you. Not as an act of cynicism or resignation. God, you're going to do whatever you want anyway. I have no control over my life. As an act of acknowledgement that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all who live in it. All these things that we're carrying aren't ours to carry. Lord, I give everyone and everything to you. And and maybe not even always for forever, but just Lord, for at least this minute, I'm going to let go of these things and remind myself that you are the sovereign Lord of creation and over my life, and you reign over all of these things. And while you invite me to participate in this story, God, unless you build the house, those build it labor in vain. Unless you build my house, my family, our community of faith, Lord, we build it in vain. The recognition of what the psalmist says in chapter 1, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. Those are the things that are easy to do and hard to bear. Blessed are those whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditate on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Hard to do, but easy to bear. So this week, right, just this very simple prayer. Use the pause app. Just put a notification, an alert in your phone a couple times a day, a few times a day, just to remind you, Lord, I'm stopping again. I give everyone and everything to you. Because Jesus says, when you come to me, You're weary and burdened. He says, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. Because the things that I'm teaching you, because I am gentle and humble of heart, 
They will actually give you rest that leads to restoration, that leads to life. Come to me. Jesus, I pray this morning for those who are weary and burdened. I pray for an act of the will to declare belief again in you. And with that belief, to accept the invitation to to come and to let go of those things that are weighing us down, that are cluttering our souls and keeping us from a life-giving union with you. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. A couple of announcements this morning, uh, the same as each week. First of all, I want to uh, direct you to our website, uh, the journeyatmcc.org. Uh, you'll find resources, information there about the church. Uh, you can submit prayer requests on the website. Uh, you can uh, support the ministry and the mission of the journey uh, by going to the website and making contributions there. And uh, you can also uh, submit a welcome card that in, uh, introduces you to us so that we can introduce ourselves to you. And uh, we greatly appreciate uh, you taking advantage of those resources. And uh, you can also do all of that on our Church Center app as well. So I'm grateful uh, for your presence, for your participation in the life of our Journey family. And our worship team is gathering for our closing song. Your thoughts are higher, your thoughts
clouds are wilder And love came like madness Poured out in blood washed from I know that you are here now Still my heart, let your voice be all I hear now Spirit, breathe like the wind, come have your way Cause I know that you are here Go with God's grace. Walk and live in love and the power of his spirit. Go in peace, but not to pieces. Amen.